Hello traders. Uh, this is Andy and I'm joined here with Jamie. Before I officially introduce him, let me just tell you that Scott is uh, traveling today. So he had to get out. We let him get out a little bit early. So we, you guys will not have to go through the uh, intro with uh, the polls and everything taken. Hey, Christopher. Hey, Waleed. So I can, everything looks clear and you can hear me and see my screen. That's great. Jamie, my friend, how are you, Benny? Andy, I am well. Um, just kind of reflecting back on the weekend that we had. What a weekend oh, yeah. it was! It was a it was a fun weekend for sure. And uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to doing that again. Can't wait till next year. That was a, a great success. All right, guys. Well, thank you for taking time out today and to come to this webinar. This is my trading studio with Jamie Hodge, and it is October the twenty fifth. And let's just dive right in. Before we do, let's. Uh, Let's talk about uh, uh, the disclaimer we have to go through here every uh, webinar. Uh, it's good that we cover uh, cover this. So uh, keep in mind, guys, that uh, this is for educational purposes only. Anything that you see and hear today uh, it should not be construed as investment advice. If that's what you're seeking, uh, please look for a registered broker, an RIA, somebody who can uh, act in that capacity. But we'll have a good time. We'll talk about some some the market uh holly holly some good stuff to talk about in holly today jamie um, oh uh, yeah something yeah. Uh, a little bit of everything so to speak all right well let's uh let's dive in uh bear with us you regulars in here as we tell all the people kicking the tire about what we have coming up and about our service all right we do have uh halloween test drive halloween test drive i should say all right it's coming up uh, tomorrow, actually, it's officially doesn't start till October 29th, but you will get access tomorrow after the close. All right, so if you're holding off, don't do it any longer because you can get a hold of this thing over the weekend and start watching some videos and really start working with it so you can put it to practice on Monday. Uh, if you want more information, just go to where it says trade ideas.com forward slash test drive. All right, uh, this is what I was referring to when I said our, our support and education here. And guys, we do understand that this uh, is a very powerful engine uh, that we're giving you the keys to uh, on the test drive. And we also understand that anytime you sign up, you know, uh, you expect uh, to be uh, kind of helped with a, a software, new software, where we go over and beyond when it comes to support, education, and training here. And we have webinars every day in the same time slot, except on Friday. It's in a different time slot. Uh, but you can see the lineup there. Uh, we'd like to throw you Dan Merkin and Brad Williams. That's the only kink in the um, uh, schedule there. Uh, we throw them on Wednesdays. Uh, it's a great place to come to find out new bells and whistles coming down the hopper or coming down the pike, whatever you want to say here. And then, and then we got traders to the traders room with Barry. I know most of you in here have been there. Guys, if you haven't, it's a free room open to every. You do not be have to be a subscriber to Trade Ideas, uh, and you get to basically watch over the shoulder and see uh, Barry's desktop and as he trades and look at his software. So it's a great place to learn. A lot of great traders in there. And then on Friday, guys, tomorrow we'll have a support session starting at 11 Eastern time. Okay, this is a Still somewhat of a hidden gem out there, guys. I mean, we, we, we get a decent crowd, but I think a lot of people are missing the boat, you know, when it comes to a place that if you have questions, uh, I can't think this is the best place to come, the Friday support session. You come in there, uh, you got all of us in there, although tomorrow we're going to be light-handed with uh, Sean and Steve on vacation, but me and Jamie will hold the fort down. But anyway, get in there, guys. It's a great place. You ask the questions, we give you the answers, and we demonstrate it for you. Uh, oh, Andy, well. I forgot to tell you, I won't be there tomorrow. You're joking, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, don't scare me I'm like sorry. that. Sorry, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're joking because that, that, the first hour can be brutal sometimes. In that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it will be me and Jamie. So honestly, guys, it'll probably be two hours tomorrow. It's a, it's a lot uh, uh, talking, but we'll we'll play it by ear. Uh, but with a short staff like that, it may just go two hours tomorrow, which is plenty of time to get the Q&A in. All right, guys, and not, we're not finished there. We have TI University. Okay, when you sign up, you have the option to 
take this TI University. You have to register for it. I highly recommend that you do that, okay? Yes, you'll find lots of resources on YouTube. There'll be great videos to help you, but this is a, a segmented uh, university that takes you Monday through Thursday. Uh, we graduate each day from one step to the next, okay? And it finishes up with Jamie on, with 401 on Thursday. Uh, basically six hours worth of training there, guys. And uh, it's not evergreened, which means we are live, so you can ask questions as we go through the curriculum. Get in there if you haven't. Even if you've been here for three or four months and feel like you need it, go ahead, register for it, and come on in. All right, guys, Brokerage Plus, we keep talking about this, and we're going to keep pounding the table on this, okay? You do want to get no uh, premium. If you're on the fence, you want to get it before November 15th because things are going to change there. Uh, and uh, uh, this is for taking your strategies uh, and hopefully, or not hopefully, but eventually taking Holly strategies and, and being able to auto trade them. All right, this works with interactive brokers right now. Hopefully in the future, we'll be opening up many more. Uh, if you want more information, go to trade-ideas.com forward slash beta. All right, let's look at the agenda today. We're gonna go over the uh, market recap as we always do. Holly recap is funny. When I was putting this agenda together, I noticed Holly recap last week at this time was all short bias. Well, today it was all long, you know, pretty much long bias. Uh, I didn't give a, uh, I didn't look at the numbers, but I know Jamie will do that for us. Uh, and anyway, uh, the the longs really outweighed those shorts today. And of course, we had a primary, uh, primarily uh, upward trend trending market all all day. Now, if you looked at after after hours, you wouldn't know that. But <laughs> nonetheless, uh, yeah, we may talk about that in the market recap as well. Uh, all right, and then just uh, my last topic here, just a little top list I, put, I threw together. It's called the 200 SMA, and it's just uh, uh, it's just finding stocks. I'm going to give you an idea of how you you know if you're when the market's been pulling back and feel you feel like it's oversold. You know what may be a good go-to top list or something you can go and look for opportunity. And I'll share this with you uh, and show you how you can use the score and and just being prepared. You know that's it's all about being prepared. All right, let me back out of this and let's pull up the good old market. And there's the cues. I actually had a one minute up because I was I was watching Amazon earlier <clears throat> on the one minute. Excuse me, let me get a drink here. I was watching Amazon fall apart on the one minute. Let me put this back on a 15 minute. There we go. Even that's even ugly too. <laughs> I was telling Steve. Uh, you know, when those numbers come out, you know, you can really get punished when you're a, a really a huge growth company and you got these incredible evaluations. Well, that first quarter where your growth don't meet the expectations that everybody on the street was was estimating, you can really get yeah, creamed. And that's what's uh, that's what's happening to Amazon today. Uh, and at one time or another, it seems like it happens to all the tech companies. All right, let's pull up the spiders. And once again, it's very, you know, very similar to the action we saw on this day right here. If you look at it, very similar. You kind of had a, a candle there, a kind of a, a spinning top, almost looks like a dough roller, <laughs> but whatever it is, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you have uh, some wicks on both sides and then a pretty big body and very similar action here today. Uh, you know, I will say this. Uh, on Thursday, you know, I mentioned that the big cap movers, you still, even on this Thursday on this candle, the majority of them were down. Well, today, at least you had action, you know, more highs than lows on the big cap. You know, so that's, if you're bullish, that was encouraging to see. But once again, you know, has, has, any, has much changed. I mean, obviously, when you drop this far, you're going to have updates, you know. Uh, as a trader, what you have to do is control uh, your sentiment, you know, for the longer term based upon this price action. Uh, I see a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people that I actually respect, you know, um, uh, potentially, you know, calling, you know, there's a bottom. Okay. Okay. Then this is the dips in by the dip. And 
I think you got to be careful. It's just like I said on this day right here. I was not encouraged that much by the price action when you looked at the big cap movers and saw the majority of them were hitting lows versus highs. That's not a good sign, not what you want to see. Uh, it's You can refer to it as breadth of the market or whatever you want to, but uh, it's not what you want to see. And then, of course, we followed up with this horrendous day uh, yesterday. Well, today we're looking at the same thing. And once again, now I – I'm not one to get fooled, and uh, we're still broken. We're well below our moving averages, and look now how the, all the moving averages are starting to slope down, okay? All right, even even the 200 is starting to look like it may be getting a little uh, U-shaped up there. I mean, far from it. It's still pretty much a flat line, but nonetheless, the majority of them are now you know, sloping down. You're below all the majors. You're... I don't know if we're still up or down a year, probably about flat, but uh, uh, nonetheless, a lot of damage. And let's go ahead and, well, you can see right there, 267, where the spiders are uh, trading in after hours. And look at the queues. All right. They're almost raced off all the all the gains. They did. They, they raced all the gains today if you used a market open, uh, and they're below it now. So be careful in this market. Uh, it you you see how jittery it is. I mean, obviously Amazon. I, I haven't looked at all the earnings out there, but when you get a big big company like Amazon came out and they uh, miss expectations, and and you're already in you know a very skittish market anyway. Yeah, you can see what happens. The whole day can be just <laughs> erased on one one bad earnings report. Yeah, Andy, and I mean things like this don't you usually resolve quickly, right? Mm -mm. Or they can, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's funny when you keep up with sentiment. Just when you're out and about in society, I was uh, flying back on Tuesday, right after the uh, summit. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hear these guys talking as they pass, and like, oh yeah, the market came back good. <laughs> well, <laughs> what does that mean? You know, yeah. temporarily. And I'm, I mean, today, you know, instead of the crimson dark red, we had the dark dark green, and you know, sentiment was good going into the close. But now mm -hmm. it's com completely changed in a matter of hours. It's 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 volatility, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's it seems like it's going to be sticking around for a while. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, need, I, none of us here are going to say, you know, we're done. It's over. The crash is coming. But at the same time, I think you got to, uh, you know, it's like um, JC was saying at our event. It, it's on the table. You uh -huh. know? Yeah, it's on the, it, every, in other words, everything's looking. He wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened. And, and, and I'm the same way. Of course, I'm not the technician. He is. He's much more qualified than I am. But I do have probably as much, if not more, screen hours. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's it, it it's not a mark. I, you know, I told my brother the other day because he keeps asking me, do I get back in? Do I get back in? Luckily, he got into 50. You know, I talked him into getting to, into about 50 percent cash up here. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, he keeps wanting to put it in play. And I eventually. Well, I convinced him to, you know, maybe sell some more, but uh, uh, it's 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 a market where capital preservation, in my mind, capital preservation is much more important than growth. Okay, you had nine years of growth. You had nine years where you've seen, or ten years almost, where you've seen your 401k just, you know, uh, these increases year over year of just incredible numbers. That's nice, but sooner or later it's going to come to a halt, and uh, it's best to be prepared and and just know when uh, the risk is there and when it's not. And to me, I just don't see. I haven't. I haven't for a while. You guys know that. That um, doesn't does not does that mean we can't bounce up? Sure, we can bounce up. We could we could stay in this range for a long time. Uh, but you know, even if you look over here, you know what what kind of you know what kind of percent of move did you see? I mean, is it worth the the risk? Look at this drop we have, and when when a and it doesn't have to be a crash, you know. It really doesn't have to be a crash to, to your to them for the market to lose, you know, thirty percent, thirty five, even forty percent. I mean, it can happen over time. So, uh, my opinion is, I've seen much better markets where I feel comfortable, you know, buying dips and putting my money back to work. But who knows? Uh, all right, Jamie, I uh, you do you have anything else you want to add to the? to market uh, recap here? 
No, it's just a great time to be in this business. Um, you know, going back to what uh, some of the comments that, that one of our speakers, JC Parrots, made, I don't care if the market goes to highs or goes to zero. It just doesn't matter, right? And with what we've put together with the AI, that seems to be the the same tune, right? I mean, it's great to have volatility or is it great to have volatility or is it great to have a slow grind, you know, bull market? I mean, I think everybody would prefer that, right? But yeah. looking at these market conditions <clears throat> and then looking at all the AI modules and how they've held up and, you know, and, and, and you know, the, you know, it's not like we've had any, you know, each modules had uh, kind of a moderate losing day throughout all this mm -hmm. vol volatility. And then of course the day it, it, pretty much kicked ass um, and you know it's holding its own so that just leads me to believe as well it's like it it just doesn't really matter what the market conditions are of course there's the dreaded you know uh, stagnant market um, but you know I think even in a market environment like that with the way that we're processing data I think we'd be fine anyway mm -hmm. I, I no, get off no. topic no, no, no. Very good. Very good point. Very good point. And I and, and what I want to I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I'm always bearish or something like that. But uh, uh, my point is, I make uh, it's like <laughs> it's like my wife. She give me a hard time, you know, and I've been telling, you know, for probably a year now, uh, my father in law, which is which, you know, uh, you're trying to protect what you made all your whole lifetime, and I keep saying, you know, you probably want to, you know, sell half, sell, go get out of some. My wife keeps like, oh, you keep saying that the market just keeps going higher. I said, well, I know, but what happens is, is you know, you say this because you know what can happen on a downturn. How fast within less than a month, guys, you know, three weeks, we've just been giving up all you, all the whole year's gains, okay? And this can get a lot worse. And uh, for those that are just conditioned to keep buying the dip, buying the dip. And, and, and trust me, because I've seen it in my 401k, you know, a long time ago, you know, just all of a sudden, what, next thing you know is you wake up one morning and 40% of your 401k has been wiped out. So I think there is a way, you know, to protect. Uh, I'm not one of these ones, you know, buy and, buy and hold, you know, just you're, you're in it for the long run. I, yeah, I think there you, it can be better managed. All right, let's move on to uh, let's move on to Holly, Jamie. Uh, uh, all I think I wanted to add, just pull this. Oh, you know, that's a chart. Is just yeah. Let's just really little quickly look. This is uh, Holly 2.0. She had a, a really good day today. If you look look on Risk On, uh, this is my Risk On using the uh, the. So I keep wanting to go back and show people this in case they haven't seen it. So using our trade size module that we have now, I put in here, I want to buy enough shares that when the stop is hit, I cannot lose more than $200. Okay. So it goes out and you can see the shares here. Different amounts because it's all based on the, uh, how, you know, the, the, the profit, the loss, stop loss. Okay. So I know with this amount of shares in any trade, I won't lose more than $200. And using that scenario or using, uh, uh, yeah, that scenario, uh, risk on profit would have been up 1,800 today. Now, it's, it's, of course, that's for before commissions and uh, all that SEC fees. <laughs> but uh, so that was pretty nice. Risk off, you're looking at 835. So even in a volatile market like this, it was predominantly an uptrend until the closing minutes. Uh, you know, there was some nice, uh, some nice uh, trades to be had for sure. Let's take a look at Holly Neo. And real quick, all I want to show here, predominantly long. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing market directional bias. Grail, not a whole lot of trades, all long. So uh that's kind of what you want to see from holly and i know there's days where it's real choppy and it, that makes it hard on holly as well you'll see a mixed bag but when you when you have a direction like that it's nice to see uh uh see them see them in the same way and i noticed we had a lot more short strategies today of course that made the cut based upon the price action yesterday okay but still majority of longs fire today and i'll let jamie actually take over the uh the wheel and uh, he could even break it down, break it down further. 
you don't mind, Jamie. Yeah, no problem, Andy. Right. I uh, My voice is trying to leave me, so if I bleep out for a minute, it just means I'm having a coughing spasm, so no worries. Oh, okay. Well, if, if, you, if you get struggling too much, don't worry. Just send it back. Yeah, no worries. Um, I right. just... Uh, I don't know. It's a climate change. Uh, try to make me go hoarse or, you know, laryngitis for some reason. But anyway, we'll see what happens here. Okie dokie. So let's just go right to the big winner. And of course, we can just glance over at the uh, channel bar here and see the scores for all the Hollies and the trade count. Um, Neo kind of, uh, we, we kind of were joking around earlier today. Neo made a run for it. We, uh, we thought she was going to pull a sea biscuit and overtake uh, the Holly 2.0 module, but uh, she had her run. Let's just take a quick peek at Neo, and we got Neo on the strategies, and now let's flip to Neo Blotter. Um, I wanted to take a peek at the equity curve, yeah, because you know, indicative of the nature of Holly Neo, the more aggressive of the trio. And looking at the you know equity curve here, we can clearly see that. You know, struggled back and forth, was underwater just a tiny bit, you know, below uh, the zero line. And then wham, you know, uh, things caught and whoosh. But if you didn't take it off the table, it didn't stay too long and then back down. So, uh, you know, if we were to take a peek at the max profit columns here, there was plenty of time to pluck some of this alpha from some of these trades here. Um, max profit columns showing how much the trade was up uh, during risk off period. So let's just take a look at one of these guys here. I just pulled up the ASTE, and we can see the nice little clean entry that Holly made here, and a pretty, uh, pretty much a pain-free trade. Never even acted like it was gonna make a run for the stop here. Um, not really a clear-cut opportunity to add to the position, as we can sometimes see. Um, we'd have to have something more along the lines of this, or even a little cleaner on this consolidation area. Um, but a nice trade nonetheless. So we can see that by the time Holly, you know, she weathered the trade with the entire timed hold, which bullish trend change. What do we have here? A 90 minute hold time. So she held that thing for a good hour and a half and popped out for 65, not too far off of the high during that period, which would have been a max of 80 cents. Now let's see what we got on the table for risk on. Uh, we used to call this one uh, sour gums, or still do. SGMS been around for a long time. Risk off of 15 cents, and here we have what is a classic Holly early exit using the profit save uh, option that she can call. And by the way, while we're on that topic, used to be when Holly first came online in 2016, profit target, timed hold, stop loss. We quickly realized, well. And that allows for a winner to turn into a loser. Not good. So we had to give Holly some options, and the two options come in the form of profit save and reduce risk, where she can cut winners and losers uh, if she feels that things aren't continuing in the in, in the direction that they should. In other words, what do we have here? <clears throat> Holly gets into the trade. Um, then we get this sideways to a little down sloping action right here. She exits right here for a whopping 15 cents. We can see the shaded area of the chart also corresponds with uh, her risk off time in the trade. Now, we can make a decision here. You know, never even really got back down to the break even line, but hey, it was a volatile day. Um, probably people were a little bit more trigger happy than normal, or one could say that, you know, based on what we saw here at the close, everybody was just like, oh, I got the bottom, right? Had a buddy. Uh, text me not too long ago, lives over in Austin. He's like, oh, yeah, I picked up some NVIDIA at a really good price. I'm like, yeah, you did get a really good price. You know, he's like, ah, I think I'm going to try to hold this one. Well, <laughs> I hope he's seen what's happened after hours because tomorrow he might rethink that. So, you know, from what we saw in Holly Neo, who's the more aggressive of the two, seeing that equity curve pop up, you know, and it didn't last long. And I think that's going to be mm, kind of indicative moving forward over the next couple of sessions. Of course, tomorrow's Friday. Maybe there might be a little, you know, uh, window dressing. I don't know, but <laughs> with what we're seeing going on after the market, hmm, could be a, nas a nasty Friday, but we will see. In any case, I get off the topic here. So if we wanted to accept a little more risk here, I mean, look at this nice fat 81 cent spread between risk off and risk on. All we'd have to do is make that decision. Okay, Holly, I see you're getting out, but uh, not me. 
I'm going to give this thing a stop down to break even. Would have worked beautifully in this case. Um, and you would have gotten to uh, extract some of that alpha between the risk off and the risk on uh, differences. And of course, we could always pull the old 50 50, bail out a half with Holly, set your stop on the second lot to just below break even, take your chances. And uh, this one would have paid quite handsomely. So, don't want to spend all the time in NEO. Let's go over to the one that stole the show today, Holly 2.0. Take a peek at the gems that were delivered. And by the way, let's do a trade count. <clears throat> 11, let's see, 33, 38 trades out of 7,500 possible trading instruments out there. All right. So, once again, 33, 38 trades out of a possible 7,500. You know, I think that right there speaks volumes about how this statistical model is doing its thing. All right, voice seems to be holding up. You know, when, when you look at a blotter, we know we're going to have losers. I mean, there are the occasional days where we have one or maybe, you know, the anomaly where we have zero losers. Those are always nice. But for the most part, we're always going to have a nice assortment of winners and losers. We just want the winners to be larger and the losers uh, we, we want the blotter to look exactly like this, pretty much on average, right? Big, big winners, small, small losers, and that's the name of the game. So we've got a couple. We've got a nice long and a nice short here to take a peek at uh, the risk on opportunity. Oh, oh, my goodness. So pretty. So pretty, Holly. Okay, so risk off ends here. Holly takes her 63 cents. Not bad, and pretty much a pain-free trade as well. Now, once we get this action right here, hmm, all kinds of things should be firing in your mind. Now, of course, if you're a purist, we'd have to mark the high right there. But then we get this sideways action. Buyers and sellers become equal, building this nice little, you know, bull flag type uh, chart right here, going sideways, and boy, what a nice opportunity to leverage an already statistically probable trade. I mean, this is what we live for. This is what we always want to see in these types of plays. It, it, I mean, I can't say it can't get any better because I think it is gonna get better in the future with the enhancements that we're making. But as far as getting that statistical probability, getting that initial push, and then uh, the nice little consolidation, right? Because there's a lot of people out there that just wait for these patterns. I mean, this is one of my favorite patterns as well, but you get the jump on it. You're already in the money, and then the pattern forms, and this is a really great opportunity. When this cross happens right here, we get that range break and just a nice orderly uptrend, a nice orderly you know, march to the north. And boy, if we were in 200 shares, we could have easily doubled up here with very low risk. 400 shares, got that nice move, and you know, a little over a buck there in the spread between risk off and risk on. But this is what I would have to call a classic. You know, you're in from the stati uh, statistical probability when things are a little uncertain in the first 30 minutes. You get the nice push and the ability to leverage that trade. Just beautiful. Balissimo. Okay. And now we've got a short. Mm, and it looks almost exactly the same as the long, nice orderly transition of course this isn't so bad right here this little opening range and we get the signal right here and then what do we get we get sideways movement again once again when holly starts to detect the sideways movement in a position that's up she's going to be a little trigger happy to get out because she doesn't want the thing moving against her but a sideways movement in this capacity in my opinion is good because it gives us once again the ability to leverage the position. Now, once again, if you're a purist, you wouldn't have had the opportunity. If you're playing that wick down there is that initial low, um, but hey, this makes a lot more sense. Hey, there's volume in these bars. You got the doji where they tried to zip it down. If anything, this is a tell, right? This could have been a very good tell, like a poker player scratching his nose when he's got something, right? So then we get the orderly uh, sideways march, and then as soon as these candle bodies get broken, wow, what an excellent time to add to the position and enjoy not quite a buck and risk off versus risk on spread.
So, I mean, some classic examples today, uh, both on the timed exit and the profit save. And two good really opportunities to really leverage that position on a long um, and a short. Of course, let's take a peek at the max profit just for giggles. Oops. Okay. And once again, 22 trades that Holly 2.0 threw out. And, you know, even if we get rid of the things, say, under three cents, you know, even though these were losers, right, the trade did move in that direction for a short period of time. Of course, bigger and bigger and bigger. So just this on its own on any given day looks pretty much the same, right? You have the ability to exit, right? Holly's doing the heavy lifting for us. You know, this 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 topic was also brought up a lot uh, at our summit, and it's really boiling down to with automation and the you know the the hold that it's going to be taking over the industry. The artistry is really going to boil down to the exits, right? And the sooner you get familiar with this process right here, I think the sooner or you know, it's definitely going to be an edge moving forward. And, of course, we're the only ones talking about it here. So anybody here is also going to have that edge moving forward. All right, Andy, I think I've rambled quite enough. If oh, you're ready you did well, to man. Your, your, your throat held, held out well. Yeah, yeah. So you ready? Yeah. All right, let me kick it back over. All right, let me uh, get this uh, spiders where I need it, back like it's supposed to be looking at. And uh, Steve, I see your question down there. Um, keep in mind that Holly does not is not trading money. Okay, Holly is generating ideas for traders who want to. So we are not a broker here. So uh, nothing will be executed through Holly. If it in the future, uh, you will be able to take Holly and by using an API execute it on your brokerage which right now is going to be brokerage plus so just wanted to make that clear all right guys so i was thinking today you know had the market down here has been selling off hard you know feeling oversold and uh, i was thinking you know when when it gets to a point uh, there's obviously going to be a point probably a lot of you are, are looking now you know or uh, maybe some stocks you want to pick up on the cheap um uh, you know, which is fine. Just, just nothing wrong with that. You know, as long as you, you know, adhere to your rules and you get use tight stops and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, if it is, if a bear market is coming, yeah, you don't want to be sitting there buying and holding in this thing. But I understand everybody does it. For the majority of us, you know, we like to trade to the long side. So what I want to do is just kind of give you an idea, and you can use this with uh, a lot of different filters we had. I just grabbed the 200-day moving average because that's a, obviously in a very important moving average on the daily. Uh, and I uh, wanted to show you how you can set up just a simple configuration. And what I've done here is just, remember it's a top list, so there's no alert. And if we go to the filters, it's just very simple. Uh, a change from the 200 SMA. Only we want to see stocks where the price is within this bracket of the 200-day moving average. In other words, between a negative 1% and a positive 1%. Okay, so obviously, if it's 2 or 3%, it's not going to show up. Okay, if it's fallen 2 or 3% below, it's not going to show up. It has to be within this, these brackets right here. And change in 10 days, I'm looking for at least 3%. I could actually make this more if I wanted to, if I wanted a deeper fall, but, you know, that's okay for me right now. Market's not going to always be plummeting like this uh, over 10-day period. So price just above $5, average daily volume, uh, 300000 So that's, that's simple. It's just very simple. And what I wanted to show you is now you can sit back and just let, you know, a window show you stocks that are – dancing around the 200 day moving average they could be they could be falling they could be had bounced and came back through whatever we're not asking for that we're not using any alerts we're just trying to find symbols where the where they're trading and here's the change from 200 day moving average where they're trading right around the 200 day moving average now if you let me see let me put this back on real time live during market hours it's great for homework because this is the way this is the way it will fr uh, freeze and I have mine sorted. Let's well, let's do it right now. Sorted by score. So in other words, this is our stock composite rating. Okay, thus the name score. 
so if you want stocks with, you know, on top with a higher score, you just simply sort by it. And that's what I've done here. And then what can happen when you're sitting around and you're looking for maybe opportunity, just pull up something like this and you can start kind of going through, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see the 200 day moving average on my chart and you can see this Amgen. What a nasty move this morning at the open. No, no earnings either. <clears throat> Uh, but nonetheless, there you go. You have it trading right around this 200 day moving average. HFC, you can see the 200 day moving average closed below yesterday and now it's tracking right around there. Uh, all right, let's see. Sorry, I was reading a question. There's one right there. You had a huge sell off right below it. And today it sit here and did the inside day, inside kind of spinning top day right at that 200 day moving average closed right at it. You don't have to look at a chart to see that. You can also see it right here on in this uh, column right here. Vertex, so, well, another one. Gap sold off hard this morning and bounced back right at that 200-day moving average. So I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm not giving you ideas right now to buy or sell stocks. But what I want to give you an idea is in the future, when you're seeing these sell-offs, this may be something to do be, uh, to look at because. Let's take it. The spiders uh, are well below the 200 day moving average now. And Q's came back today, obviously closed just below it, but obviously selling off in the pre market and after hours. Probably going to be ugly in the morning with the gap down. So when you're seeing that, maybe you can, if you're looking for relative strength, maybe you can look for stocks that are trading, you know, right around this 200 day moving average. It's a pretty nice setup right there in uh, CVS. You have a stock, you can see the pivot level there and the 200 day moving average there came down holding it nicely. And the reason I like these is what you can do is you can set up like a uh, price alert. Okay. And then maybe when that price alert goes off, it goes off tomorrow. You could take a buy and you have a really uh, simple stop because you're playing off the 200 day moving average. You want it to hold that moving, that moving average. So maybe you just come in here and put this double low right here because you know you're broken. It's broken. Uh, let's see if we can find some more examples. There's one that's dancing around holding up so far. I'm not saying it's going to continue to hold up. That's for sure. But uh, nonetheless, this is a real easy way, guys, to find opportunity in the marketplace. There's a great, another great example. Long-term trend up, touching its 200-day moving average. You know, if for some reason the market does kind of dig in, this may be a great candidate. Uh, there's another one. Try to sell off today. Put a little doji in. So, guys, that's that's about it. Uh, I, of course, I added an earnings date. You, know, you want to always keep an eye on earnings date when you're buying or selling stocks because, uh, you know, for example, we're in earnings season. You want to know, okay, am I going to be buying, about to buy something that's going to have earnings tomorrow or the next day? So you want to keep an eye on this. This Vertex, you can see it had earnings yesterday. Bought back, you know, if this regains to 200 after earnings, maybe it's a possibility. Uh, I'm trying to find another one here. Lowe's, of course, is earnings a long ways away. But, you know, there you go. You got a nice little pivot area right here, right? That's where it's been bouncing. Of course, you have your 200-day moving average right here. This is the kind of information, guys, that you can get real quickly from our software and uh, and build it. You saw how simple it was to build, but it, this, can, this can really help you when it comes to, you know, looking for opportunity. And you just don't have to use the... Uh, 200-day uh, moving average, you can come in here and use one of our position and range filters, uh, you know, kind of like I do on the pullback above 50. Um, uh, there's so many tools you can use, guys, when it comes to this. But the two, I wanted to show you the 200 average because I know that's such a, an important uh, moving average when it comes to daily charts. Uh, and this is a great way. And look at all the, all the stocks you can just kind of scroll through. As a matter of fact, let's do this real quick before we sign off for today. Let me go to historical date and let's see what this looked like yesterday after that really ugly, ugly candle. I'm going to put it on three o'clock. I'm on central time, so that's a close. And the that was yesterday. I already, I'd already done it. Wait, I thought I put it on live during market hours. What the heck? Wait a minute. Yeah, I did. That's just the old 
number I had in there. Okay, let's do this again. Historical date, 3 p.m. And today is, I'm sorry, today is the 25th. So this is what it would look like yesterday. Let's see if any of these bad boys bounce today. CF, this was yesterday, closed right at it. Of course, it had a gap and a doji. Nice bounce in that one. After it went down, almost tagged it. This is what. This is where you could have got some nice homework. Uh, this one not so good, but let's face it, uh, the the IBB, the biotech industry is having a really tough time right now. So I, I you might want to stay clear from those. This one didn't do a whole lot off the 200 day. Little bounce there. Nice bounce there off the 200 day. So there you go. It, this is kind of, you know, this is, remember, this is yesterday's close. All right. So you're seeing a lot of these stocks dug in. Of course, the market kind of dug in as well. But nonetheless, uh, you're seeing a way to, you know, maybe go out, use something like this. And I will share it, even though it's real simple to build. Let me go ahead and put it back on live during market hours. And... Yes, Waleed. I mean, obviously, you could use something like this on an intraday uh, for sure. You know, yeah, I, I, I could definitely, you know, especially the uh, like the eight period moving average, which is real close to like Steve and I like to use when we were at Today Trader. We like to use that 10 period moving average. Uh, and uh, uh, so the eight would be something that would be really uh, handy in um, uh, intraday trading for sure. Let's see if I got any more questions here. All right, looks like we're all caught up here. Yeah, those questions for Holly, uh, save those near for like when we have our, uh, maybe come in for our Friday Q&A. We can talk more about uh, that. You know, it, it's going to be new. It's going to be new for us, this Holly. I mean, it's great idea generation. We have proven that over the last two, almost three years. Okay. There's some great ideas come in there. Okay. Uh, uh, it has outperformed the S&P handily. We know that. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, this is new for us. Okay. Well, once we put it in, into, into work and uh, a lot of people start using it, I, I think, I think some people are going to use it differently than others. In other words, I don't think everybody's just going to go all in and, and, and take every Holly trade. You're going to be able to choose what strategies you want to use. Uh, risk parameters will be different. Uh, th there's, I don't know. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Okay, I think it's going to be fun to watch, and I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be profitable. Uh, but uh, you know, can I come out here and, and pound the table saying you know everybody's going to be you know billionaires after this? No, I can't do that. <laughs> but it's uh, it's untested. Andy, you mean we're not going to be uh, living on our own island, uh, we, ironing our hundred dollar bills on a daily basis? We might be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if what else do we have on the agenda right now, uh, Andy? Because if not, um, I can do one more little shtick of oh, Holly. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, I can go. see, you know, we've got a couple of individuals out there that are sure. pretty persistent uh, and wanting an example of a Holly trade, which I kind of thought we did that earlier, but I'll be more than happy to go over one more um, because someone is asking for it. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Just take it and uh, and just we'll, we'll wrap up with that, Jamie. Sure. Okay, so first and foremost, what you're seeing out of these modules here uh, is a list of strategies that's generated every day uh, after the market closes from our AI cluster, right? So even as we speak right now, <clears throat> we're populating the database with all of today's tick data, right? And as myself, Andy, Steve, Sean have described countless times in countless webinars, there's a list of about 35 to 40 it's always vacillating up and down you know maybe it goes to 45 35 somewhere in between there of what we call base strategies for holly right now the base strategies produce huge amounts of trades but they look very good from a statistical standpoint so we're feeding the ai these high quality data streams then it takes it and as steve likes to say before there was david there was a block of marble and then you know 
uh, you know, it was carved out by the artiste, right? Well, we give Holly these blocks of marble and then she carves out the nice looking data sets. And that's what shows up for the starting team the next day here, okay? In the form of a statistical weighted entry. We can see right here all of these strategies and what their statistical weight is. So anything coming out of Mighty Mouse today had a 63.2% chance of winning. So when we look at this and we sort by entry time, <clears throat> we can see that the first trade generated today came out 13 minutes and 22 seconds after the open. So that's the first signal. If we bought it, we probably did quite well. Now, what's the main reason for buying this? Because there were 7,500 tradable things out there, give or take a few. And Holly only generated 38 signals. So, hmm, there should be a light bulb going off right there. Now, why do we take the trade? Because it came from a statistical model and it had a very high percentage chance of winning, right? So this is a statistical model. Um, it's not going to sit here and go, hey, this thing looks good. Why don't you buy it, right? Imagine if this was a trader, a human being. Imagine you were sitting next to this human being that basically let you stare at their screen and they were a very proficient statistical trader, right? That might, that might be something pretty good. Some people might call that a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. We've got three mentors right here every day playing the market with statistical perfection. If you were going to go try to make it in the poker circuit, the pro poker, uh, pro poker, blah, 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 pro poker tour, well, you better have a good teacher, you know. So what if you could go sit, what if Phil Hellmuth said, hmm, you know what, you can come hang out with me, watch how I play. If you can learn from me, uh, great, you know. Of course, that's not going to happen. But here, we're making this happen. So it's, it's a statistical model. You know, is everybody taking every trade? No, but some people are. Some people are just using this as a highly weighted entry system and then they only trade the chart patterns that they like but they still have an edge on everybody else so there's you know trading is subjective holly's part of trading she's a trading uh, you know model so therefore it's subjective you want to play the purest statistics right you you should be in everything you want to pick and choose out of high probability clients or uh, possibilities you can do that as well so everybody's perception is just a little bit different, um, but you can apply many different, you know, strategies to these high probability signals. So mm -hmm. I hope that illuminates uh, the topic a little bit there, um, and that's all I got. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be able to control in the Brokers Plus, you know, your stop. Maybe you don't like uh, Holly stop loss. You know, some people have different time frames. You'll be able to set tighter stop losses if you want them, or maybe you're looking at a longer term time frame. You can, you know, uh, cre create your own profit targets and and, uh, uh, and stop losses inside the uh, inside the Brokers Plus to override. I would think. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure uh, Holly. So. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up today. Uh, I got to get on the road here in this traffic. Uh, thank you, Waleed. I appreciate it. And let me let me just uh, walk us out here. Do what Scott normally does. So hopefully, I can uh, I can keep it going here. All right, guys. We did have a very successful 2018 summit. Uh, this was the lineup. It was great. Uh, Everybody is checking out on live stream. The I'm sure not live stream now, but the recordings are up, and you can watch those. I think we've almost got 10,000 or something like that views. It's great. Oh, I wasn't showing. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Uh, so anyway, guys, if you want to check out, watch the videos. Go to trade-ideas.com forward slash summit video 2018. And uh, yeah, you this will be out there for a very long time. So, but you want to catch it. There were some great speakers, and I promise you, you can learn a lot. All right, I mentioned this earlier, guys. If you're new in here, this is a great way to check out Holly. It says five days, but you can get access tomorrow. So basically, it's a whole week and then some because you can get access after the close tomorrow. Uh, check it out at uh, TradeIdeas.com test drive. 
we have a book and a very timely book at that. We put out early last year, guys, how to win in a post buy the dip market. And Jamie, myself, Steve, and Sean all wrote a chapter in this. Uh, and you want to check it out, you can download it for free right here at trade-ideas.com forward slash ebook. Uh, all right, we have uh, a podcast uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. All right, it's uh, you guys want to check that out, okay? You can find it in your favorite app, okay? Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast, and you can watch older ones in there as well. So be sure to check that out. We do have a promo code that you can sign up right now, okay? If you can't even wait for the test drive, you can get a, a promo code Alpha Studio. will save you 50% off your first month or year, okay? If you find out more information, go to trade-ideas.com forward slash price. All right, if you have any questions, guys, the best place is info at trade-ideas.com. We do not have a support uh, phone line here, okay? The phone number that you see is for uh, billing, all right? And you will have to leave a message and we'll get back to you. Uh, but we provide so much support here with our webinars and all our events. Uh, and plus we have our uh, website where you can come and get help there. And guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And uh, thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks for your kind words. And we will we'll see you tomorrow in the uh, support Friday session. Yep, just me and you, me and you, yeah, Andy. That's um, it, man. But it's a great place to to learn. And you know, whatever you got, bring it in, and we'll do our best to answer it for you. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.